Solar Puria Sattva, Trust, It's What We Build, presents the Realty Debate with Manisha Natarajan. We all know real estate is a cyclical industry. There are years of boom followed by years of doom. Right now, we are in a cycle where everyone is painting a grim picture for residential real estate and busy getting euphoric about commercial real estate. Now, cut to clips of the Realty Debate four years ago and it was just the opposite and reverse. So today on this show, we are not going to focus on the business swings. Rather, we shall focus on how does business change with every swing. Every downturn we know helps in tightening an industry and forces them to look inwards to become more efficient. Is that happening in Indian real estate? Joining me today are Cyrus Engineer, Senior, Senior VP, Sales and Marketing, Shapurji Palanji Real Estate, Joe Verghese, Managing Director, Colliers International, Samir Jasuja, CEO of Prop Equity, and Vineet Relia, Managing Director, Sare Homes. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. So let's begin with the number of real estate developers across India. Samir Jasuja told me that his count says 21,000 developers across India. Cyrus Engineer, will this downturn at least bring the number down, help in some consolidation, help some people to shut down business, clean up the industry? Do you think that will happen? Well, at least if Rera doesn't, Manisha, then the downturn definitely will. <laughs> on a lighter note, of course. Okay, give me a but number. I, I I think, mean, 21,000, how think... many are we going to be left with? Good God, I mean, that's anybody's guess. Crystal ball grazing is the national <laughs> pastime, so I really can't put a number to that. Okay. But clearly we see, even in the downturn, there are certain basic parameters which are keeping the industry and developers afloat. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen trends in terms of developer reputation, the propensity of delivering quality products within reasonable amount of time at appropriate costs. I think today's buyer seeks and needs value. Mm -hmm. If you're providing him value, we've seen that sales across our own projects have in fact only increased in certain okay. geographies. Okay. So location still plays a very prime and critical parameter. Delivery, quality, builder reputation, and of course, ultimately, a customer-focused approach. These okay. are winning factors which okay. will see you through any downturn as well. All right, so you're saying that if you're willing to give value and of course, promise quality, then, you know, product will sell in downturn or not downturn. Samir Jasuja, 21,000, how many do you think will get thrown out in the market? Forget the small builders who are building, you know, single buildings. But let's take the organized industry. Let's assume that that's a 5,000 name. I remember both of us discussing that there must be around 5,000 large developers across the country. Do you think, are you beginning to see consolidation? Are you beginning to see some of them saying, hey, look, we got into this business for, for trading land, for making that money, but that game is over, so, so let's not even get into this business or let's sell to the larger developers and get out. Absolutely, Manisha, that's already started to happen. Uh, this number, which is a startling number, actually is also of projects that we track, which are all organized projects. We're not talking about You're small developers. Yes. organized developers? Yes, we're talking about not Good organized Lord, I need well, a fan here, really. Seriously, can well, we boost the AC? I thought actually this number was just everybody who was getting into Manisha, we real estate development. Manisha, we don't even know 10 developers in this country are organized or not. I'm talking <laughs> about people who do group housing projects. They're, I'm not talking about small home builders over here. Okay. That's the distinction I'm making here. Okay. Uh, uh, the consolidation has started to happen in a very big way. Uh, in fact, the top developers, you could say, in the top 100 developers uh, of any city, uh, the bottom 50 have already started offering land banks so that they own to reputed developers such as, such as the Godrej or a Tata on a joint development format, where their expectation now is just a profit-sharing model. They have clearly recognized that... Uh, they are not going to be able to sell because of the reputation that has got tarnished over the last three to four years. Uh, and the biggest money-making opportunity in real estate has been and continues to be really the land banking piece. Converting the land from unzoned land to zoned land and that's where the maximum value kicks in. And uh, the construction is something that uh, is not really yielding uh, profits for the developers. Has that stopped? In fact, now, has that, have the landlords become a little bit more you know, let's say, uh, realistic about the kind of money they can make. Yes, so what has happened is that by, because they bought a lot of land, even I would say at much cheaper values, but that land has become very illiquid. Mm. So what they really need to do now is to liquidate that because they've also done, uh, mostly buying of this land has also been by using debt or by using monies that were raised 
uh, or got from the customer when he bought into the flats because everything was selling so quickly okay. at that time. So now they've got into a catch-22 situation where on one hand they have a land bank which on paper looks very valuable but in reality that's not selling. So the net asset values that we saw in the Unitec prospectors and the DLF prospectors, yes. gone are the days. All they right, paper, <laughs> right paper value. Okay, uh, the other trend which I see beneath Relia and this is where I would like your reaction uh, and this is what I've heard at, at the various conferences I've gone that more demand or most demand is now for ready to move in apartments. So the whole mechanism of funding with buyer money is, is now out of the window. So, so how is that changing the way business is done? Because cost of funds and cost of capital that means is very, very high or going to only get higher for builders. So our thought process on the, uh, this entire situation is that once RERA is implemented, and I mean implemented on the ground, I think there is going to be renewed buyer confidence as uh, you know there will be some level of trust deficit which will definitely go out of the system so there will be definitely renewed confidence and there will be actual customers who will be wanting to get in at a launch stage and you know wait for their uh, products and homes to get ready. However, I think uh, a large chunk of uh, consumers today or buyers today which you know who buy at launch stages and pre-launch stages are investors and basically flippers who are just looking at making uh, you know unreasonable kind of returns they've been making on it by selling them at possession stage or pre-possession stage. I think for those people they're going to find it difficult because uh, you know they make money only after the project uh, their exit is only done by actual users coming in and the kind of returns these people are used to making I don't think there's going to be enough room for them to make those returns again. So yes, that's going to get affected and having said that, this is definitely going to drive up the uh, finance cost for developers because developers will now have to really look at complete financial closures of the project, keeping in mind a very high sensitivity on sales. You know, so for example, in our case, we are looking at a 30% maybe sales value where looking at financial closures only at a 30% sales value. So that's going to drive my interest cost up. And definitely all these factors in the long term are going to drive prices up because the developers are already at rock bottom margin. So I don't think there is any room for them to bear the additional interest. Joe Verghese, how is the developer community going to deal with it that the pre-launch, early launches or early, buyer, early stage buyers have, have disappeared from the market? Rera will actually make it even tougher for that to happen. So, so how will the developers or what do you think developers should be doing to recalibrate their business? Uh, I think for developers, this is a great opportunity. Uh, like I think uh, Cyrus Engineer uh, mentioned, um, projects that uh, are delivered by developers that have a good brand uh, are delivered uh, 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 within the delivery schedule, within quality, or at least have a perception of being delivered at that. And developers who don't have a trust deficit, uh, we are seeing those projects actually having sales. Now, the time for sales to happen has got extended. Uh, typically, if a consumer was, a, a customer was taking two to three months to make the decision, that's probably gone up to nine months now. Um, and that's, that's a lag we are seeing in the industry. But developers today should look at how, how, how could they get more disciplined? How could they build a brand in this market? And how could they get recognized among customers as being uh, um, uh, developers who deliver to time, to quality, and um, to, um, to, to, meet their, to meet the customer demands. So okay. if you look at it from an opportunity perspective, this is probably the greatest opportunity. Are they looking at it as an opportunity? Mr. Engineer, the question that I'm asking here is, of course, you will be able to sell because of your brand reputation, uh, early stage projects as well. But more and more, the buyer is moving towards buying ready to move an apartment. What is there? Is there a way are developers beginning to look at the fact that, hey, listen, let's let's not sell projects in phases. Let's only create units which can be completed in two years and we can deliver quickly. Is there that urgency for delivery? Yes, clearly the, the impetus has moved towards ensuring that uh, developers put their money where their mouth is. So if they are, they are, they are suggesting deliveries happening in 36 months, mm -hmm. they jolly well need to ensure they give it in 36 months as well. 
the one the one factor which i think has not been discussed on the show is that developers are also resorting to easier payment schemes which kind of regain customer confidence in terms of construction happening sure. so we've seen the emergence of these book 20% now and pay 80% on possession and so on and so forth and variations of these in some ways they are to regain investor confidence customer confidence to ensure that they are paying for something which is currently under construction and not just a pie in the sky so okay. we've seen the emergence a lot more of these customer centric easy payment schemes which have been in some ways able to address the current situation on hand as well vineet really is that true because when we went out and did stories and found out we didn't find many takers for those subvention plans i mean we've done a couple of stories over the year to say does that really help but at least in markets like ncr that's that's not seeming to really kick in that demand so i think uh, you know what we are seeing in the market and the trends coming in from our sales uh, is that there is uh, the subvention schemes actually give the investors certain amount of leverage you know so you had investors who were used to making a lot of money by putting in small token amounts and then flipping the units in this case what happens is that the margins are lower and all the sales which are happening are on low margin sales where you know there is a by default built in uh, leverage for investors actual users don't definitely uh, go for these subventions because of two reasons one there is definitely going to be a 3 year or a 4 year period for uh, deliveries secondly also that there is a finance cost which is built in into the product so you know they might find uh, secondary products cheaper at times and they're looking more for ready to move in properties but i think the trends have been very clear subvention schemes are working but they are working only for investors where by default there is a leverage built into the product what i'm not hearing is that this the word which i wanted to hear was efficiency you know this industry has been extremely inefficient samir jasuja and and you know for capital it's been inefficient it's been inefficient in resource management it's been inefficient in quality in inefficient in delivery will this downturn now because the buyer is saying i'm going to look at i'm i'm happy of buying an end product a ready product and i'm not going to fund you and let you be inefficient do you think there is this enough recognition that we have to get efficient well manisha uh, i'm sure that the developers are starting to realize that uh, having said that uh, uh, you know they are in a little bit of a very serious uh, problem where they have a lot of sales that they have done and the execution of those projects yet needs to be completed mm -hmm. and they are just focusing right now uh, to be able to complete those projects because a rera is kicking in and their projects will be uh, will be uh, subject to rera laws uh, their huge interest burdens are kicking in uh, so they're really losing a lot of money there is also a lot of fear in the market that 30 to 40% of the projects will never see the light of the day because the developer has to put in much more money than he has to recover from the customer and he has no incentive now to complete those projects so mm. that's a little bit of a scary thought uh, as far as uh, today's uh, situation is concerned yes i can safely say that they become more efficient in one way they have recognized that they cannot be the ace developers that they wanted to be and now they are happier being landlords and doing joint development agreements with professional developers who have the who have the efficiencies in place and now they are willing to play the role of a landlord and not a developer because they know they cannot execute the kind of uh, stuff that they promised to sell hmm. so at least on the land side there is efficiency on the other hand on the construction side uh, there is a lot of efficiency that is kicking in with the reputed developers who have serious uh, cash uh, who have who have seriously cash in the bank and they are well uh, well funded and well capitalized those people are definitely taking advantage of technology the best construction technologies and implementing that across their projects okay the one question that i also wanted to ask was uh, mr engineer that you know overall the demand should have picked up much more the way i look at it you've got prices which have got which have been stagnant for the last 3 years they've not gone anywhere uh, sizes have shrunk a little bit to keep that affordability factor going as well especially in large cities like mumbai your interest rates have come down so actually your affordability factor has improved overall for the industry it's improved but but even then demands not kicking kicking in 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 circumstances like this do you think that uh, it's it's foolhardy to increase the supply aggressively because there seems to be a 48 month inventory overhang across the across top eight cities 
I was just exchanging notes with Gulam on the previous show recently, Manisha, and I think this quarter will definitely bring in a lot more of good tidings for all of us. We've seen real estate definitely on the upswing in certain pockets, in certain micro markets. I think the mood is upbeat. I think in India, a lot of purchase is sentiment driven. So we've seen that people are like kind of waiting to fish at the bottom of the barrel. They're still waiting to see prices correct a little further. But frankly, I feel that we've reached that lowest level of real estate prices. So we've also seen that good projects typically have been selling well, whether at pre-launches or even post-launches. Again, I say the fundamentals of real estate are still intact. If you've got the good location, if you've got a good product in terms of pricing, in terms of value, in terms of appropriate customer-oriented schemes, I still see a lot of sales happening for top-tier developers across the country right now. All right. Gentlemen, I'm going to wrap on that note. So, hoping that 21,000 number will come down to a more sane, healthy number of 5,000 good developers who will become efficient and deliver the quality that they've uh, promised. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. And we will conclude with saying, Achche de naenge, good days will return and we'll come back with better industry ethics and better business practices. Goodbye.